Harry, you don't know nothing about raising no kids. Why'd you talk to Sarah like that anyway? Listen, baby, I told you. Somebody's got to teach that kid some morals. Morals? What kind of morals does an ape know about? Damn it, I'm tired of that. Playing that little virgin role. What are you trying to prove, huh? I know all the cats you've been messing around with. You can't talk to me like that anyway. You keep your filthy mouth away from me. Listen, I'm telling you right now, you better shut up. You stay away from me, I'll throw this at you. You've had it. You deserve this. Five forty-two, nine oh four. Yeah, the old man's about thirty years old, and he's been drinking. Him and the old lady have been fighting about the kids. That's what it's all about. She's scared out of her gourd. He's been slapping her around. There's got to be four or five kids in there, all under ten years old. How'd you know that? Radio didn't say anything about kids or their age. Police officers, open the door. What is it? We got a call from one of your neighbors that you've got some problems here. What's the trouble? There's no trouble, but there's going to be some trouble if you guys don't get out of here. Please, please, hit me. Don't let him hit me again. Please. I didn't hit her. I just pushed her a little bit to show her a little respect. So now why don't you pigs get out of here? You call the pigs, man. You! You want to right here, lady? Yes, please. Get your hands off me. Get out of my house. You don't have any right coming in here. Just quiet down or you're going to jail now. Get out of here. Cool it or you're going to go to jail right now. Did he give you all those bruises, lady? Yes, he did. How did he start? Our daughter, Sarah, she wanted to go to the movies with her boyfriend tonight. And he started screaming at her. So what's wrong with that? I'll tell you what's wrong with her. She's 12 years old. She cuts out, doesn't come home when she should. She's a little tramp, just like her mother. Ma'am, would you like to make a citizen's arrest on him now for battery? No, he'd really kill me then. Well, either you do or you don't. No. Well, that's about all we can do for you, then. It's a misdemeanor. It's not committed in our presence. You don't want to make a citizen's arrest. You have to see the prosecuting attorney in the morning. You listen. You hit her again, and we have to come back here. You're going to jail. You understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aren't you going to do anything? He told you what to do, lady. Go see the city attorney in the morning. Come on, Barry. Let's get out of here before they start up again. No, bitch, I'm really gonna kick your ass. Five forty-two or nine oh nine D four fifteen resolved. Four fifteen resolved. That's about as resolved as uh, next year's World Series. You got a better way of doing it? Well, somebody must have. You wait a minute, I'll fill out the car and we'll see if it's quiet in there. Oh, it they usually quiet down. What's the address here again? 
When a patrolman begins his watch, he can expect 85% of his radio messages to be service in nature. A great number of these are Penal Code Section 415 family disputes. In dealing with a 415 call, the average patrol officer will use the traditional approach. He goes to the residence, defuses the violence, listens to the woman, listens to the man, and then asks the complaining party, do you want to make a citizen's arrest? Usually the party wants the officer to do the arresting and doesn't understand why he, the citizen, has to instigate the arrest. The officer may even discourage the party from making a citizen's arrest because he knows that the complainant may change his mind the next morning. He also knows that most of these calls involve a continuous argument, an argument that is not likely to be solved by him. If the victim will not make a citizen's arrest, the officer usually leaves as quickly as possible. His parting shot will often be, see the city attorney in the morning, or it's a civil matter, see your lawyer. What the? Wasn't backfired. What happened? After you left, he came at me again. Put your hands behind your back. So I went in the bedroom and got his gun where I know he hid it. I told him if he came near me, I'd shoot him. You think our recommendations will be useful? They're great, Monty. You wanted these recommendations to come straight from the patrolman. I uh, sure did. Uh, we're going to build a program around them. We tried to get to the root of the problem. Uh, we found that kissing off at 415 normally meant we were going to have a return call the next weekend. That's why we thought referrals had to be an integral part of it. I agree. Uh, there's a lot of public agencies in this area that can help citizens. Most policemen think they ought to stay out of the problem. Don't get involved. You know, like diffuse and split. Well, these recommendations are real alternatives to the violence in these situations. Arrest certainly is not the answer to 415s. Let's go ahead now and implement the recommendations. On January 11, 1971, the Oakland Police Department assigned two teams to handle family disturbance calls. The action came after two years of study by the department for ways to reduce the violence and conflict that erupted so frequently between the police officer and the citizen. Every family disturbance answered was recorded on a form for later follow-up and evaluation. The essential elements in the plan focused on two objectives, mediation and referral. The officers participating in the program had full knowledge of the community services in the area and referred citizens to them as a part of the program. Staff members of the crisis unit then followed up the referral. Mediation was used when the problem was not a serious one or when the people involved in the dispute chose to attempt a private solution. What kind of gun does your husband have, Mrs. Patterson? He has a small gun. I don't know what kind it is, but it's a small pistol. Uh-huh. You sure it's, it's not a rifle now? No, it's a pistol. It's something about like this. Uh -huh. Has he been drinking? No, he hasn't been drinking. He, you know, goes out every now and then. And uh, I'm about sick and tired of it. Yeah. That's your husband yeah, right that's there? Him up there. Uh -huh. Well, what did this all start about? I don't know. He just freaks out every now and then, ever since he'd been back from the war. Uh-huh. He didn't get into a fight. He didn't hit you or no, anything no. inside. He just threatened me with the gun. Uh huh. And that's when you called us. Yes. Uh huh. Okay, Mrs. Patterson. I think maybe we can uh, talk this thing out with your husband. You think maybe? I wish uh, someone would try. Yeah. Have you called the police uh, on no, him before? I try to give him a chance. Uh huh. Yeah. You know. So uh, 
We'll see if we can't talk this out with him, okay? Okay. So you kind of stay behind here until we give you the word, huh? Okay, let's go. Okay. Hey, man, I told you, we don't need no help from no freaky cops. Why don't you just clear the hell out of here? Mr. Patterson, your wife called us. She said that you were going to shoot her. You gonna take me in? Come on, cop, come on, get me. You gonna have to kill me. We've got no intention of taking you in, Mr. Patterson. We just want to come in and see if we can settle this matter between you and your wife. Hey, look, man, I told you, we don't need no help from the man. Why don't you just get the hell on out of here? You must really be upset to threaten your wife like that, Mr. Patterson. Hey, man, is that what that tramp told you? Look, man, I ain't no dummy. You know, I know the law. I got a good job. I know that you can't do nothing to me till I've committed some kind of crime. And I ain't done nothing yet, right, Rhonda? But that don't mean I ain't gonna do something. Mr. Patterson, could we talk this over inside the house? Maybe your wife started the whole beef. But we're not going to arrest you or even decide who's right or wrong. Hey, man, you sure are disturbing the neighbors. That's why we'd like to come inside and talk this thing over with you and your wife. Hey, man, look, I've been to Vietnam, you know? I haven't seen a lot of combat, man. I ain't afraid of you. Well, so have I, Mr. Patterson. I just got back 10 months ago. I was with the 5th Division. The 5th Division, man? That's a lousy outfit. I was with the seventh, man. You know, Marines. Like, we slaughtered them gooks all over the place, man. You think I'm afraid of you? Hey, man, I bet she probably told you I got a gun. Well, I do, but it's registered. Well, why don't you let us come in and talk to you man to man so the neighbors don't get involved? Maybe we can send you and your wife somewhere where you can get some help. He's with the fifth, eh, man? Well, I ain't got no grudge against you, you know, but I ain't afraid of you either. All right, you can come on in, but, you know, just watch yourself. The police officers here use several techniques to cool a person down. Sergeant Watkins tried to convey the idea that he was not there to arrest, but to help solve the problem. He downplayed his authority. Sergeant Watkins tried to be concerned and sympathetic in order to cool down the high emotional state of the citizen. Both officers tried, finally successfully, to remove the dispute from the street. Sergeant Beers changed the subject in an effort to defuse the situation. Neither of the officers threatened the citizen. Sergeant Beers personalized the situation by telling the citizen he also was in Vietnam. Both officers called the citizen Mr. to add dignity to the situation, avoiding unintended insult. The officers told the citizen that they wanted to help, not find out who was in the wrong. Okay, that's the tape of an actual 415 situation that Monty and I handled last week. The chief is really hot for this program, and he wants us to implement it. Got any comments? Sure do, Sarge. I think it's a crock. Oh, come on, Turkey. If you think I'm going to let some crud call me a pig and just stand there, you guys got to be kidding. Look, Frank, we're trying to reduce the violence in this community, not encourage it. You heard the statistics at the staff meeting. What's the little name called? Plenty. After some creep calls me a pig, I'm supposed to politely call him mister, see if I can analyze his problems and refer him to a proper agency. Well, you learn fast, Frank. That's about it. Look at the alternative. You rough him up. You really alienate him. You reinforce his hatred and you and all other authority. You book him on assault, he's back at her the next weekend. She calls us again. Same thing. Maybe this time he beats her up a little bit more. And maybe he shoots her. But what about that? Well, you said it. She won't call back. If I'd have wanted to be a psychologist, I wouldn't have gone to the academy. I got problems of my own. Okay. Just because you're wearing that uniform, you're a big man. You got to resolve everything by lumping them. Is that it? Don't you think we're smart enough to recognize a health problem, a social hardship, employment difficulties, or mental illness? Nobody's saying that we're supposed to treat these people. But what's wrong with referring them to somebody else who can? You're weird, Sarge. But practical. Something's got to be done. The chief's promoting this experiment. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. The Family Crisis Intervention Program. It's going to take a long time to put a dent in the violence around here with a program like that. That's for sure. It's laminated into the streets. And with that attitude, I can see we're going to have a little family beef of our own, Frank. Now, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean that you and me and this program are going to be riding together for a while. Oh, man, what did I do to deserve this? Listen to this next tape, Frank, and then tell me if you don't think we accomplish more with our method.
He's coming back any moment now. He's gone to get Michael at the playground. And I'm afraid he's gonna hurt him if you guys don't do something. If your life with this man is so miserable, why don't you separate or divorce, Mrs. Davis? That takes money. Lawyers are for rich people. Have you tried calling the Legal Aid Society? The what? Well, if you qualify, Miss Davis, and I'm sure that you do, you can obtain a divorce at no cost. You may also obtain a court order, provided the court goes along with you, to prevent your husband from interfering with you or the boy. I could. It's very possible. Here's the number of the agency. It's not very far from here. Do you know of an agency that could help my boy? You know, one, one of those shrinks or whatever you call them. You mean a psychologist or a psychiatrist? Yes, one of those. It's highly possible. Let me give you the address and number of the Alameda County Health Department. They have many services for people in your position. Thank you so much, officers, for your help. I Oh, uh, Mr. Davis? Yeah, that's me. What are you doing here? Mabel, did you call these goddamn cops in there? If you did, I'm gonna break your ass. No, you just, just take it easy, settle down. The reason your wife calls is because she's afraid you were gonna hurt your son. Michael, would you sit down over there? Hey, hold on a minute. Just a minute here. This is my house. You don't run anything in here. I didn't call for you. We'd just like to talk to you and your wife for a few minutes. Perhaps there's something that we can do. Yes, you can. You can get the hell out of here. I didn't call for you. Sure we can, Mr. Davis. We haven't come here to arrest you. We're concerned about the safety of your boy. Your wife tells us you intend to whip him with a belt buckle. The kid's a disgrace. The teacher sent him home from school for breaking a window. Now I have to pay for the damn thing. Perhaps the boy could use some professional help, Mr. Davis. Did you ever think of that? Yes, I'll give him the help as soon as you officers leave. Hank, that's why I called the police. I don't mind you beating up on me, but I'm not gonna let you mistreat our son. The officer's are right. He needs help, but not your kind. You shut your mouth. You're not even in this woman. Well, she's pretty much involved. You know, she is the boy's mother. What are you, a wise guy or something? I know it's the mother. Perhaps there's another way to handle this. If the boy is a disciplinary problem, I've got a boy of my own. And sometimes just talking things through with him is a tremendous help. Oh, so now you're trying to tell me how to raise my own kid, huh? Why don't you catch this scram? I know how to take okay, care of this hold better. It, Mr. Davis, just hold it. Oh, and what are you doing? Now I'm under arrest. What are the charges? As we told you before, Mr. Davis, we didn't come here to arrest you. Most officers are probably not aware that under Penal Code Section 415, they may arrest a person for merely threatening violence upon another person. This interpretation of Section 415 is seldom, if ever, used, even though it would support an officer's arrest for mere threatening. Such an arrest should only be made as a last resort, and only in a case where the officer is firmly convinced that an assault or other crime will be committed as soon as he leaves the scene. Prosecuting agencies encourage officers to have the complaining citizen make a citizen's arrest or seek a complaint from the prosecuting agency, because the complainant in a 415 family dispute often changes his mind in the morning. Normally, officers should try to avoid arresting complainants in 415 family situations for that reason. But, as previously stated, if the officer firmly believes that violence will occur as soon as he leaves, the wording of Section 415 does permit him to make an arrest on the basis of a mere threat of physical violence alone. Oh, so you did come here to arrest me, huh? No, Mr. Davis, we didn't. And you, you little champ, you called him. All right, that's it, buddy. We tried. Mrs. Davis, would you care to make a citizen's arrest against your husband? If you do, I'll break your goddamn neck. All right, Mr. Davis, that's about enough. We really don't need your wife to make the arrest. It's a misdemeanor committed in our presence. You're under arrest for assault. Hey, wait a minute. What's all this snatching? Hey, wait a minute. Hold it. Get your feet up. Get some water. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, you don't have to be kicking it. Going on. What's all this shit? Get your shit? feet back. Keep him on the wall. Hey, just take it easy. Okay, let's go. Now you see why I wanted to get rid of him. He was fined and he lost his job last fall. It's been absolutely hell around here since then. And I've been afraid for my son. If he makes bail, 
You'll be back home today. Perhaps it would be better if you and your son stayed with friends and relatives until he cools down some. Our department will call you later to find out how you made out with those referrals I gave you. Goodbye, Mrs. Davis. So long, Michael. What do you think, Frank? But just what do you think you've really accomplished? Preliminary evaluation of this experiment shows that our approach is working. It's working so well that we're now in the process of adopting this approach to the 415 problem as departmental policy. Our officers no longer will be permitted to shrug off 415 calls with it's a civil matter. Lady, go see your lawyer in the morning. But we know that a policy without teeth is just about as effective as a patrol car with four flat tires. So we've beefed up the curriculum at the Recruit Academy with about 150 hours of courses designed to help the patrolman understand more about the human beings in his community. We've got advanced officer schools and we're maintaining a close liaison with the public and private agencies in this city. In addition, we are also developing a policy manual directly relating to conflict management. We sponsored this family crisis unit in an attempt to do something about the violence and conflict which constantly flared between officers and citizens. Its success relies solely on the good judgment and experience of the officers recommended for the unit by their peers and through interviews. During the experimental period, we assigned two two-man cars to the Family Crisis Intervention Unit. These four men had family disturbance assignments as their primary responsibility. To monitor and improve the program, these four men met informally for self-evaluation. They also conducted in-depth analysis of the tapes made during the family disturbance interventions. As these discussion sessions continued, the role of the policeman in family dispute situations gradually changed. We began to see how a policeman, without any special psychological or social training, could more effectively cool down a family disturbance by not brandishing his gun or threatening arrest. We saw that by properly managing the dispute and referring the parties to one of the many social or religious agencies in the community, we could not only cool down a potentially violent conflict, but in many cases, resolve it. We mediate and refer. Only if that fails do we arrest as a last resort. Naturally, if a felony occurs, we will arrest the person immediately. But if the problem involves a misdemeanor committed in our presence, we will try to explain to the parties the police responsibilities involved. Some complainants will drop their request to remove the person at that point. We tell our officers to advise the complainant to make a citizen's arrest if he insists upon an arrest being made. Although the final evaluation of this experimental program has not been completed, preliminary data show that the program is successful in 82% of the cases. Well, Frank, we got you convinced yet? Not entirely, but I'll give it a whirl. 201. 201. 201, take a 415F man with a gun. 1601 7th Street. 201, handle code 2. 201, check. Start whirling.